tell you, Oscar, immediately. Have the marketing department institute an immediate change of, of policy. No, no, not tomorrow. Today. Effective immediately. Bumbling fools sometimes, I swear to you. Well, I suppose the two of you are wondering why I've called you in here today. I am so sorry about the misunderstanding, Mr. Macy. Well, I only have one thing to say. Congratulations! This is the greatest goodwill idea to ever hit the store, by God. Just imagine. Macy Santa recommends gimbals. It's revolutionary! Whatever the two of you do, you must keep this crinkle fellow recommending a playing Santa Claus. Whose idea was this? Ooh, <laughs> I, I can't take all the credit. No, Michelle Hummer, you're much too modest. Well, the two of you can expect raises. Uh, effective immediately! I can't wait to see the look on old Gimbal's face when he gets a load of this. <laughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Macy. Back to work, ladies. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, well, well. Can you believe I just fired our wonderful Santa Claus? You did what? Oh, why? The old man is crazy. He thinks he's really Santa Claus. Oh, I don't care if he thinks he's Little Red Riding Hood. Now you are to get him back, or all is lost. Macy will have us fired. But Macy brought his grandson to see Gringle this afternoon. We must get him back at any cost. Well, well perhaps we could get a, uh, another Santa Claus to carry out the same oh, policy. No. That doesn't work. Well, perhaps we should have the, the company psychologist examine him. All right. But you must not say a word until you get Miss Sawyer's report. You understand? Oh, Mr. Gringle, how very witty. Mr. Kringle, I'm so glad you're still there. I have reconsidered, and um, you can still have the job. Uh, thank you, but I must decline. Oh, but why? I'm afraid I don't like your attitude, Mrs. Walker, or Miss Shellhammer's either. Uh, goodbye. Oh, Mr. Kringle, your helpfulness and kindness have caused such a sensation. You must stay and keep spreading goodwill. Why, even Mr. Macy... But you've already clearly indicated your disbelief, and that's enough for me. Well, if you don't stay and work for us, I'm afraid Mr. Macy won't be so angry and oh, you will be my job. <coughs> Mr. Kringle, please stay. It's Christmas. Well, if that's the case, I, I clearly must stay. I, I can't have you losing your job, not just before the holidays. Think what that would mean to your young daughter. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> You know, Mrs. Walker, I, I've been more and more worried for the last 50 years or so about Christmas. It, it seems we're all so, you know, busy trying to beat out the other fellow to make sure that things are going faster and looking shinier and costing less that Christmas and I are sort of getting lost in the shuffle. Oh, I don't think so. Christmas is still Christmas. No, Christmas isn't just a day. It's a state of mind. And that's what's been changing. And that's why I'm glad I'm here, because maybe I can do something about it. So lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, thank you for tonight. Oh, Mr. Grimble. Yes? Would you go to Miss Sawyer's office at your earliest convenience? Miss Sawyer? Yes, she's the vocational guidance expert for Macy's. We give all of our employees a little exam before they begin work, but with the all the excitement if you bypass that requirement. I'll bet it's one of those mental exams. Well, uh, yes, of sorts. <laughs> Never you mind, Mrs. Walker. I, I have taken them before, and I have never failed one yet. Miss <laughs> Adams, will you please look in the book and see uh, if there's a Maplewood home? And then put me through. Oh, that was a close call. What a relief. Mr. Kringle, who's the first president of the United States? George Washington. How much is three times five? Fifteen. How's your eyesight? Oh, it's very good. Your hearing? Couldn't be better. Is your memory good? Oh, it's one of the finest. How many fingers do you see? Three. And I see you bite your nails, Mrs. <laughs> Sawyer. But 
you're, you're quite nervous, aren't you? Do you sleep well at night? <laughs> that is no concern of yours. How much is three times five? Uh, Fifteen. You asked me that already. Uh, people with nervous habits like yours are often the result of uh, insecurities. Mr. Kringle, this is inappropriate behavior. Are you happy at home, Miss Sawyer? <laughs> that will be all, Mr. Kringle. My examination is over. Well, you may go. Thank you. And you take it easy, Miss Sawyer. And get out in the fresh air more. You know, to try to relax, get some exercise. We don't like to, will you? Goodbye. Thank you for coming by, Mr. Kringle. Bye. talk to you about Chris. There are a few things I think you should know. He has some definite peculiarities. <laughs> yes, we've already discovered that. I certainly would agree with that assessment. Chris is absolutely harmless. There are thousands of people leading perfectly normal lives with similar mild delusions. He's incapable of harming anyone. His delusions are for the good. He only wants to be friendly and helpful. My only concern is for Chris's welfare. I do think it would be a good idea if someone would keep an eye on Chris after working hours. <coughs> Thank you for stopping by. I will see to it that your request is honored. Thank you. Mrs. Walker, this man Kringle has a definite fixed delusion. And if this man is kept on here, I cannot take any responsibility in this matter. Well, then I will. Huh. Dr. Pierce said all that is necessary is for Someone to keep an eye on Pringle. And that is a splendid idea. After all, we can't go against Mr. Macy's wishes. And of course, Miss Walker, you are the very one to look after. Oh, me. no, no, no. I, I live alone with my daughter. How can they ever stay with me? Oh, well, my son's away at school. <coughs> I have an empty room. Oh, wonderful. But I'll have to talk with Mr. Shellhammer first, and that's going to take some doing. Oh, let me see. Oh, I know what. You will take Mr. Kringle home with you for dinner and look after him, and I'll talk with my husband and I'll ring you later. My, my, Miss Cleo, what a superb dinner. Thank you, Mr. Kringle. Oh, and I should note, I have come by this tummy through many years of hard eating. <laughs> Sorry about that venison steak I brought over for dinner, Chris. I just wasn't thinking. <laughs> Or drive a big bus down Fifth Avenue 
How would you like to be the Statue of Liberty in the morning and fly 